Hello, hello, you guys, and welcome back to another episode of That's My Personal Business. I am so excited. Today, we have Annie Kaplan on the podcast. How are you, Annie? I'm doing so well. How are you, Eden? I'm good. Thank you. I know we were just talking about it before we hit record, but I'm like, new year. I'm feeling really excited about 2024. So I'm like, feels like just good, fresh energy for this year. I totally agree. I actually just did my like vision board party for the year, which was super fun. Um, And last year when I did this, literally the next day, so many things manifested. So, and already I'm kind of seeing that happen. So I think just being really intentional about what we want for the year is just going to only make good things happen. Wait, that's so cute. I love that. I'm doing um, like a girl's night tomorrow to do our vision boards and I'm so excited. Is there anything in particular you guys did for yours? Um, so usually what I do is in advance, I have like my Pinterest vision board and then I'll go to like (laughs) print everything out. Um, but my friend buys these like vision board books. And then we actually had crystals on the table. This is very California, but we had like crystals on the table and we were just like speaking our goals out loud. And I think just when you're with a group of people that are all in this like positive energy, it helps to like amplify what you want to manifest. I I, love like saying it out loud. I think we like don't do that enough. Yeah. And I think, you know, like back in 2021, when I like manifested my dream, dream life, like, I think I'm a really good manifester, but like I was doing your manifestation challenge. And I think we all need like some support sometimes, because no matter how good you are at something, it's really good to have people that can kind of keep you focused and accountable. And it was really that manifestation challenge that made such a big impact on, on my life and where I am now. Oh, you're like my favorite person to reference when I talk about the manifestation challenge. Really? Oh my gosh. Yeah. We haven't even introduced yourself. Will you introduce <laughs> yourself for people we that just, don't know we just you? got excited. Yeah, for yeah. sure. Um, so I am a multi-published international award-winning fine art boudoir and brand photographer, creative director, and business coach. I specialize in creating art that is inclusive from the female gaze and that celebrates the uniqueness of my subjects and encourages self-love. Um, My background in the corporate world prior to my entrepreneurship journey was in business development, corporate training, sales, and marketing. Um, I'm also a certified nutritional therapist and 10-year autoimmune warrior that is passionate about being an advocate for individuals living with chronic illness and using art as a healing tool. I love bringing all of my passion and skills together to create safe spaces for women to learn, grow, and remove internal blockages to success and abundance. Oh. What an amazing intro. I'm like so many questions, so many things. Yeah. Um, But yeah, if you want, I can give you kind of a little rundown of like pre-pandemic to now. Yeah. Well, I'm like, you have even just from your intro, like you do so many things. You were also Mm -hmm. doing so many things beforehand. Like talk to us about like what the last couple of years, yeah, have looked like and where you were at kind of pre-pandemic. Sure. So pre-pandemic, I was living in Toronto. I am born and raised Canadian. I had been working for 10 years in the corporate world, specifically in the insurance industry and like sales, marketing, business development and training roles. Um, Photography was really my side hustle. I never had much of an intention of like going full time. Um, I always was just really passionate about creating beauty in the world. Um, So I was always just using my PTO to like fly to different places for like shoots and workshops and mentorships. I was also in naturopathic medicine school for nutritional therapy. Again, not necessarily to become full time. It was really just to support my own health and give me credibility when trying to help other people. Um, I always felt like I had these three different parts to my life. I loved my day job. I loved sales and marketing and solving problems every day. I loved it. But then I also loved creating art and helping women feel beautiful. And then, of course, I'm very like health and wellness obsessed, but I really kind of followed my gut on all three of those paths um, and built those skills and invested in myself. And I really feel like now I'm living this life that combines all three of those things together. Um, In January 2020, I had just graduated from naturopathic medicine school. I had done a photography mentorship that really just up leveled my skills and defined my brand. I was getting a lot of publications and visibility. And of course, we all started January 2020, like all excited. This is our year. And then, of course, March 2020 was locked down Um, in Canada. It was really, really strict. We were locked down for a long time. I was really struggling with my mental health. And 
Unfortunately, my grandmother, who was my entire world, she passed in April 2020. And the pandemic really changed my corporate job. Like, it just wasn't aligned anymore. I didn't like how they were handling the situation. And it was really just the big push that I needed to make some change happen. Um, I never really felt like Toronto was energetically aligned to me. And I was staying in LA for about a month in August, 2020. And I just loved the creative culture. I loved the wellness culture there. It felt like it was feeding these parts of my soul that I kind of had to feed myself in like the Toronto corporate environment. So I really made the decision to give up everything, move and like really give my business a go. And what's interesting is that I had been trying to move from Toronto to Montreal to be closer to my grandmother for like years, years. And for a variety of reasons, it just like never worked out. Like I had partners who didn't speak French and they couldn't get jobs there or like I come in second for a promotion and it just never happened. But when I made the decision to move to California, my visa was approved within three months of trying. This was also during your manifestation challenge. We loved and, hearing it. <laughs> yeah, and it just happened so easily, which I think is a real testament to like when something is aligned for you, it will happen. Um, and of course, when I moved here, I was so confident and like certain of everything. I had spent like years building my network, my self-esteem, and just really my confidence and my skills. I was surrounded by an amazing support system of women. But when I did make that move from like a safe corporate job to being an entrepreneur in a new place during a pandemic, it was like smack in the face after smack in the face. It was so hard, like it was so hard. And I had this whole new layer of healing and learning that I needed to do. There were so many times where I just wanted to give up. And I, I know you said I can like swear on the podcast, but I was like, fuck this, I'm going home. Like, this is so hard. But every time I felt that way, something would happen, like a really cool job or like a publication or an award. And it would just like, push me to keep going. 2023 was the most successful year of my life, like personally and professionally. And I really attribute that overall to my consistency, to really learning more balance and to being very intentional. What did that kind of like, when you say finding more balance, like finding more intentionality, what did that kind of look like for you? So, I mean, I think it's really important to note that our external world is always a reflection of our internal world. So how we feel about ourselves is always going to affect like our health, our business, our finances, our relationships. And I, the biggest lesson I had to learn was how to balance my masculine and feminine energy. Because I came, you know, I live in San Diego now, but I work all over like the US, all of Southern California. San Diego is in like direct cultural opposition to Toronto. Toronto is very much like New York City where it's like hustle and like kill yourself for your job, like knock people over to get there. Like, and San Diego is like people come here to like escape and surf and like, I've heard like Peter Pan syndrome, like all those kinds of things, you know? And I am someone who's very like ambitious and driven. I've been in sales my entire life and I always felt like action equaled results. But when it comes to entrepreneurship, you really have to like plant those seeds and allow them the time to grow. Things don't always happen overnight. So, so it's a lot more challenging and it really did feel like jumping out of a moving car, like going from such a fast paced sales environment to even as an entrepreneur, like I work a lot, but it's just not the same. <laughs> it's, it's just not the same. So I had to kind of learn that you can't force things like. A metaphor that a therapist gave me previously was it's like holding sand. The tighter you hold it, the more it's going to kind of fall out the sides, the sides of your hand, right? Um, so I really had to learn how to like embrace my feminine energy and like attract, allow things, surrender, give myself some rest um, as opposed to like pushing and forcing. What were like some tangible ways that you kind of started to like practice the feminine? Cause they think like, like you said, people kind of like lean one way or another. And I feel like, you know, I live in New York. I'm a, like 
one on the Enneagram. I'm a Capricorn rising. <laughs> like, I'm like, however you want to like label it. I'm like, I'm a working girly. So it's been like yeah. a real effort to try to, you know, balance that out with femininity. And I'd love to hear like kind of what your, your action steps were. Like, how did you start like logistically introducing that into your life, especially yeah. after a big shift? Totally. And I mean, I think first I'm just going to explain a little bit of like what feminine energy is for anyone that's like unaware. Um, but it's basically a universal energy unrelated to gender that really represents the qualities of like softness, creativity, flow, nurturance, compassion, and intuition. We both have both like masculine and feminine energies within us, but we are in our masculine energy when we are business minded, focused, structured, and goal oriented. And when we're in our feminine, we're soft, sensual, flowing, and intuitive. And we need both of those, but we need to make sure that they're in balance. And so a couple of ways that I really pull myself out of my masculine energy, and this doesn't work for everybody, but firstly, yoga is a really big part of my life. Um, when I was working in the corporate world, there were very little boundaries. My clients and my team had access to me all the time. I was entitled to a lunch and I would use that as my yoga time which was really the only time during the day that my phone was like put away and where I could ground back into myself. It's still a really big part of my routine for many reasons. Like, you know, I'm a tall girl. I really need to feel like stretched out and it really helps with like digestive stuff. So, and, and it's really helpful for my anxiety. I've had times where I'm like, something happens and I'm like in tears and I'll start yoga and be like bawling. And by the end, I'm like, fine. You know what I mean? So um, that's still a really big part of my routine. Um, but I'll also just go for a walk. I'll grab a matcha, something else that brings me joy, or I'll do something creative that kind of is still a little productive, like mood boarding or it sounds really silly, but like, I love reality TV for someone whose brain that like moves as fast as mine does. I love the mindlessness. And <laughs> so sometimes it's just like sitting there and letting go of what I'm doing and just like indulging in some like ridiculous reality TV. Um, I think playing is so important for creative energy because again, feminine energy is creative energy and it comes from being playful and light. So if we're constantly in fight or flight, it's, it's very hard to manifest anything from there. And I think a really good example that I have that I think any creative can really understand is back in November, I was doing um, a mentor like styled shoot for a photographer in LA. And there was a lot of moving pieces to that shoot, right? Like I had my team, my makeup artist, my assistant, I had, I always make sure there's snacks, there's like all sorts of things going on. And I had to be in my masculine energy to like manage the time of the day, manage the team, do all those things. Um, but then when I was shooting or helping her shoot, I had to then like be in my feminine energy and be able to like slow down and, and kind of be more present, right? Like I couldn't get stuck in, in one or the other. Um, but it doesn't always need to be a big thing. Sometimes it's just being present and grounding yourself, a quick meditation, some mantras. I take like really long showers where I'm just like feeling the water. I put music on. I'm really just enjoying it. It's just like slowing down and being intentional, even if you're busy and it's just for a moment. So when you're going for that walk, are you feeling the sunshine on your face? Are you feeling the breeze? femininity is presence and to find balance in this it's honestly just constantly checking in with yourself reminding yourself and bringing yourself back to present and I think another thing that's really valuable with this is having coaches and mentors to help check you I was gonna say how do you that was gonna be my next question was like how can you tell if you're leaning a certain way like what are some of the signals that you're maybe like too far in your masculine or too far in your feminine like how can you Kind of start to check yourself to know what to work on or bring in more of. So I think if you're too much in your masculine, you'll start to feel burnt out. You'll start to get very frustrated and you can just tell that your energy feels kind of chaotic. Um, and I never do well when I'm in that position. I don't, I don't think anybody does. Right. Um, and I think we really have to make sure we're putting our health first because we can't take care of anybody else unless we're taking care of ourselves. So like we, like we said previously, pushing harder is not what's going to get you the end results. Um, sometimes we really just need to kind of slow down and let things happen. 
Um, I think if you're too much in your feminine energy, you're maybe not showing up or being accountable for things that you should be accountable for. Um, so it is really just finding that balance. What are like, let's talk like one at a time, too far in your masculine, too far in your feminine. Like, let's say you're too far in your feminine. How can you kind of start introducing more masculinity and like kind of starting to balance that out? So I would say really trying to manage your time so like time blocking is really helpful and so maybe there's a certain part of your day where you're planning your schedule you're doing your marketing you're doing what you need to do and then maybe in the evening that's your time where you're allowing yourself like i'm just going to relax i'm going to enjoy good food i'm going to take a nice shower and like really um making sure you're staying in balance that's amazing how do you like kind of navigate this day to day? Do you have practices to kind of like touch on both? Um, so one thing that's really important for me is my morning routine. I'm and I'm a really I have to be a very big advocate for myself with this, because I think what's challenging is when you live with an invisible illness, like nobody would look at me and think like, oh, she's sick, she's struggling. So I have to be an advocate for myself. And just like as a side note, that's why I love boudoir photography so much. It's like helping women sink into their femininity um, and just helping them feel seen and heard because nobody really knows what they're going through until you're in somebody else's shoes. But um, my morning routine is very, very important to me. I get up, I take my supplements, I do my yoga, I take my shower. And, you know, as entrepreneurs, and honestly, whether you're in a corporate job or an entrepreneur, you're accountable for your time. You know, it may not feel like it sometimes, but all of our decisions truly are ours. And so we should be planning our day in a way that feels right for us while still, still allowing us to be able to show up for the things we need to show up for. Right. So a lot of the times, I mean, it's not always possible, but I'll schedule meetings later in the day because I know how important my morning is, you know? Yeah, if it, same. right. And if it can't be that way, then, you know, I'll be like, OK, can I do my workout a little bit later? Can I, you know, if I have a meeting in this part of town, is there somewhere where I can get like I know where every healthy restaurant is in every city. It's like a special skill of mine. It's so bizarre. I'll be like, oh, they have the best matcha at like this place in Dallas. I've never been to Dallas. But you know what I mean? Like, I just I know. And so I'll like treat myself to something or whatever, you know? Mm -hmm. No, I think that's like such a great reminder too, that like we ultimately do have control over our own schedules, especially as entrepreneurs. And I feel like giving yourself that permission to work around it is one of the best things you'll ever do. Like, I know there was such a long period of like my business where I was like meetings start at nine and then I would feel horrible every morning, like rushing to get ready at nine. Cause I'm just, I'm not a morning person. Um, I like sleeping until nine and then like slowly dilly dallying until like noon. Um, and I just remember one day having the realization of like, wait, I literally control if I take meetings before noon. Like, why don't I just only start taking meetings post noon and on certain days? Um, because I realized that, you know, if I had meetings every single day, then there was no days where I could get out of the house and like go to work at a coffee shop or something like that. So um, I feel like you need almost like this permission slip from someone. So consider this podcast it for anyone. Yeah. <laughs> but I'm like, you control your schedule. You get to decide when these things happen. You can even make it so that you only take, you know, let's say photo sessions on like a certain day of the week or whatever it may be. I think that's such a like great reminder that we ultimately yeah. get to decide what works best for us and then shift yeah. our business around it. Yeah. And it's all about boundaries really. And so that was one of the kind of lessons I had to learn as an entrepreneur. My boundaries had to get stronger. My people pleasing had to get better. I'm in progress on the perfectionism but like those were all things that had to be worked through right because we really are in control of our lives and our schedules um even though it doesn't always feel like it always feel like it yeah talk to me about I would love to like pick your brain on the perfectionism side of things <laughs> sure. like, like I I feel Again, like I'm recovering I, yeah I'm the <laughs> same and I feel like social media makes it so much harder because like 
are, we are so much more visible now than we used to be. Like even 10 years ago, like I just think of like my life as I was graduating high school, like Instagram was barely a thing. It was like a thing where you would post occasionally when you felt like it and hope to break 11 likes, but like there were no stories or, you know, there was not 24 seven access to people like there is now. Um, And so if you have perfectionist tendencies, I feel like that's just heightened now by how much we're chronically online and like seen 24 seven. How have you, how did you kind of catch your perfectionism? Like, was there a breaking point and how have you kind of like worked on it? I mean, for me, it's just like very evident and very strong. And I mean, I think part of it does come from living with chronic illness and feeling like I need to prove like that somehow makes me weak and I need to prove that I'm allowed to be here and that I'm worthy of things in life. And so I need to like overperform and achieve and like give off this like impression that, you know, I'm perfect or my life is perfect or, or whatever it is. And I mean, it's just, that one really is like a daily challenge. Um, but for one thing, my feed is curated. I think I have 60 people muted, like something like some wild amount, you know, like I don't follow people that give me that feeling in my gut of like, why am I not good enough? You know? And I also sometimes take breaks because I do still follow a lot of photographers whose work like I admire and I think art is subjective. So it's very hard as an artist, like I I see us looking at our own art, the same as us looking at our own faces. You know what I mean? Like we're the hardest on ourselves. And so it it can be very challenging. And so sometimes if I'm getting into that really critical mode, it's like, I need to take a break, but it's also surrounding myself with women who are going to hype me up when I'm just like being really hard on myself. Oh, I agree. I think one community is so important. And two, I like what you said about like, we're harder on our art than we like, like similarly to how we're hard on ourselves. I was having a conversation with my therapist the other day with like, body dysmorphia and my body's been changing and just like how I look at my body and it looks like it's constantly changing and she gave the comparison of like you know when you stare at a word for too long and it starts to like not look like a word like it starts almost shifting and changing the more we like physically hyper focus on something the more it starts shifting and we like truly can't even trust our own judgment because our brain starts distorting it and it's the same thing with our bodies it's the same thing with our art like the more we hyper focus and hyper fixate on things they're gonna shift right and so it's the same thing when we're like looking at other people's art so much too much and like comparing it to our own and hyper focusing on that like there's a healthy level of focusing on yourself and your artwork and then there's hyper fixating where it starts to get distorted so I think that's such a good reminder to like let it breathe and let it go oh a hundred percent and I think when it comes to our art as well like we're the ones creating it like we birthed it so it may not have looked the way we we intended it to look it may have like we got frustrated in the editing process and then like everyone else is only ever seeing that, that end result. Right. But we know kind of everything that went on behind there and might be like picking it apart. So, I mean, yeah, like you said, I think community is so, so important. There are some beautiful, wonderful, amazing photographers that, you know, when I'm struggling, they're going to, they're going to pick me up. And it's the same when it comes to our bodies, right? Like, I have really wonderful friends that like are going to pick me up when I'm being really hard on myself or my partner or, you know, just surrounding yourself with, with good people, I think is really important. And then also, um, I, I read this book, I can't remember the author, but it was called mirror talk, I think. Mm -hmm. And it was a practice for 30 days where I had to sit in front of the mirror and like hype myself up, you know? And like I said, it, it, it was it was good. It was helpful and it was challenging at first, right? But then it gets easier and easier because anything that you do starts off challenging and then gets easier. So it's a practice like like anything else. And I think that's also why I'm just so passionate about help women helping women love their bodies in like its current season because they are constantly changing. And we are always looking back to like, how it was whenever a year ago, five years ago, and like, oh my God, I looked so great then. Why was I so hard on myself? And then you're still being hard on yourself in that moment, you know? 
Oh, absolutely. I feel like too, I was having this conversation with my therapist. I'm like anyone that grew up and was like young ish during the early two thousands, like it is so deeply conditioned in us to feel like we need to look a certain way. Like I'm so happy for the current generation that they like have avoided quite a bit of toxicity that like we had to kind of deal with when we were younger, not to say they're free from it, but, um, and like you've kind of been saying the way that we feel about ourselves bleeds into everything else. It like bleeds into our business and it bleeds into our art and it bleeds into everything that we do. So it's yeah. like so important that we take care of ourselves. Yeah. I mean, if you don't see yourself as valuable, like how are you going to, how are your clients going to see yourself as valuable? So I think doing the inner work is so important and I am such an advocate for like therapy and coaches. I have someone for everything. Like I have, you know, a therapist, a career coach, a spiritual advisor. And I think it's so important that when you want to learn a new skill to go to an expert and invest in yourself, because an investment in yourself is never going to be a bad investment. Mm, so true. Do you have like a favorite thing that you've invested in, in yourself, not even necessarily like in business, uh -huh. but like something that has really changed the way that you approach life in general? Um, I mean, definitely everything I've invested into my photography, um, skill wise has been super valuable. Um, but I think probably just like therapy and my spiritual coach, it's, it's just, I mean, we've said it a few times, but your mindset affects everything. And I don't even recognize the person that I am now compared to like the person I was a few years ago, who was so negative and so hard on herself. And like the way that, so one thing I do is called choose another thought. If I like catch myself with a negative thought, I'll be like, nope, choose another one. And so even if it's challenging, cause it is challenging when like, I don't know, you don't get a job or something happens and you start going, oh, I suck, you know, mm -hmm. um, to be like, nope, choose another thought. And then I'll sit and be like, I am so talented. I am abundant. I am valuable. My right clients are finding me. And, you know, we really can't create success and abundance from a fear and scarcity mindset. Mm -hmm. Like it's just not possible. Fear and scarcity only create more fear and scarcity, you know, love and um, just an, an abundance mindset cultivates more abundance. Mm. So I think really investing in my mindset has been the most important thing. Oh, I love that. I think that's like a great place for us to kind of like wrap up. And I had one more question, which is sure. like, what is like, if you could give people one actionable thing to do after listening to this podcast, to like start working on their self-love or their mindset, what would that be? I mean, I think investing in yourself is so important. I've had so many times where I've spent like my last dollar on like a workshop or some kind of um, spiritual course or whatever it was. And an investment, again, an investment in yourself is never a poor investment. But I think if you can just like focus on shifting your thoughts um, and catching it, choose another thought, like try that practice. Um, I think that that's extremely beneficial. I love that. Oh, well, thank you so much, Annie. This has been, I'm like, I'm so excited to re-listen to this episode and like take <laughs> on notes. Thank you so much for coming on and sharing all of this. Oh, you're very welcome. Thank you so much for having me. Yeah. And we'll obviously shink, shink, wow, share everything, all of your links, wow, <laughs> in the show notes. Um, but for those who don't follow you on the internet yet, where can they find you? Uh, so on Instagram, annie.kaplan.photography and my website is anniekaplanphotography.com. I just like completely did my website and I'm in love with it. So go check it out. <laughs> oh, it's so exciting. That will all be for you guys in the show notes below. And thank you again, Annie, so much for coming on. Thank you. Yeah. And thank you guys for listening and we will see you next time.